Robert's out. This is the first instance, and this is why we'd like to hear from them. Um, we've been talking about these standpipes, that the standpipe is bent over. Um, that, that is probably a good indication that there's been some damage done. Uh, there are cruises that have been going down the road, of course, have been um, disconnecting these customers, but we can make a visual to see that there's been some damage done. And so um, those, those are obvious things to look for, but we are not electricians. We're not experts in this. And so if in doubt, I think it would be wise to call the electrician and ask the question. Did your cruise encounter any difficulty with people hooking up generators improperly? That's occurred in the past where it's je uh, electricity going back out the line, jeopardizing workers? Yeah, there, we have certainly had some instances of that. They, when you connect the generator to the system, it has to be done properly so you don't get the power back fed, they call it, and so our workers can be electrocuted uh, when we think the system is off. And so we have protocols to make safe, but there, are, there have been situations like that, particularly when people have lent generators Nine days and uh, 275 homes remaining. Um, pretty emotional about this. Uh, what is it like to, to have this you know, be the cathartic end of, of this big well, iceberg? It's a relief, uh, relief that our customers' power is coming back on. I've stood here with everybody else saying we will not stop until the job is done, and we will not stop until the job is done. And so obviously, it, you know, we're, we're very tired people, but we're you know, proud of it. Too. Um, I hope today uh, we've got some people from Manitoba. We're trying to get home. They have literally not been home since Christmas Eve, and so that that would be they were here first. And so I'm hoping that we can relieve them um, as early as possible. Hopefully they could be home tonight for their families. Um, we do have additional resources that are still coming in from Hydro One. They're helping us out, so we're making sure that nobody, you know, there's every truck is has got their complement of people that they need to get back out on. Right now it's this backyard construction where the wires go down along the fence line and there's no way to get into that location with our heavy equipment. And so the, you know, the, 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 the wire and the ladders and everything are being carried in manually, clearing the brush manually, and then uh, restoring power you know, by climbing poles and getting back up to where the wires are. And so it, you, you can imagine that that's much more labor intensive than you have a big truck on the street. You're cutting the chainsaws from the, from the bucket and restoring power from the bucket. And so it's just more time consuming. And in this post morning, what's the Yeah, there's maybe two things I would like to have done over the coming days. So I, I said yesterday, we have an industry association and I would like to call on uh, the Canadian uh, Electric Association, it's the industry association, and, which is made up of all the utilities, the large utilities in Canada. And let's get together and talk about arrangements and what worked and what can we learn from it. I think those arrangements have worked well. We've had people come from far and wide. The one I've been talking about is there a way to extend that to call centers to in fact have an outage call answered in Manitoba for a Toronto customer. That's just my dream at this point, but that's something I'd like to throw out to that group and see if we can find some solutions for it. Uh, secondly, I'd like to bring somebody in that's really familiar with these kind of events, maybe from Florida where they get a lot of damage from weather and other things. Just Say, you know, you followed the proper protocols from you know, learning experiences we've had in the past, but are there things we can do better about how power can be restored? And so uh, I think it's, it's time to have a, you know, an independent, fresh eye look at it. Um, but there'll be so many learnings that come from it. Anyway, thank you. I can tell you that the, the team behind me, 
and how they come together and the coordination, the communication and so forth is far better than anything I've experienced through uh, San Francisco and uh, New Orleans. And that's a testament to the experience of individuals that I'm just so uh, proud to work with. We have eight units down right now. We're uh, hopefully that'll be done by the end of the day. If not, we'll coordinate that with our, with our staff. I want to thank my staff for the diligence that they've uh, the work that they've done the 24-7. I also want to commend my residents for the resilience and to uh, and just to uh, be patient and get, get through this. I just, I'm just so appreciative uh, to be an American working in Canada and all the fine things that you guys do here. I'm very, very proud. Any questions? any more chainsaw calls? We were speaking about that yesterday. No, thankfully we haven't. And that should be, uh, actually, we should mention that. Uh, in the coming few weeks, there's going to be uh, lots of time spent uh, cleaning up, uh, you know, getting rid of branches, those types of things. Please, again, be very careful with uh, tools like those chainsaws. I did mention yesterday we had a very serious accident related to one the day before. Uh, but also, folks, uh, in the coming few weeks, there are thousands of branches out there still hanging in trees, and uh, people should be very aware of their surroundings. So uh, please pay attention to those sorts of things. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to first uh, thank our winter maintenance crews. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone uh, fully realizes it, but we actually have winter events the weekend of December 14th as well. So our crews have been working on December 21st, the weekend of December 21st and the past weekend. So uh, when all is said and done, we've had many staff who've been out there working literally December 9th uh, through this upcoming weekend. So um, I'd like to thank our forces for the good work that they've been doing. Um, secondly, all of our signals should be up and running at this point. If the public comes across any traffic signals that are not, please call them at 311. At this point, though, they will be one-off incidents. Uh, on the debris ma management side, we, again, we have about 48 crews out there today. They're focusing on areas in and around schools to get them cleaned up for the start of school next week. We will then be tackling collectors and local roads. Uh, over the weekend, we, we did a pothole blitz where we uh, punched out about 2,200 potholes, uh, but as the ice recedes, we will continue to find more potholes. So again, if the public sees them, please call them in at 311. And finally, uh, we are expecting a winter uh, snowstorm tomorrow morning, two to four centimeters, not, not a large amount, but if the public can go out and clean their sidewalks in advance, that would be very helpful to ensure that the sidewalks are safe for the public. So, any questions? Thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's been a difficult time for Toronto Fire Service challenge of service over the last eight days. Fires also returned to normal call volumes, thankfully, and now gives our, uh, a chance for our staff to recover and recuperate and, and get ready for the new challenges. Uh, I echo the comments of Chief Raptus and, and uh, the support that we've got from all our emergency responders and all the other groups within the city. It's been uh, absolutely uh, critical to our success. My staff, you know, 3,200 fire whether the direct frontline firefighters, communications operators, support staff, all my management team, everyone stepped up to the challenge. Overcome, adapt and overcome, I guess would be the motto. Uh, we can learn from this experience as we can from all our experiences and uh, learn what it takes to be prepared to handle major incidents. Uh, yesterday I talked to a number of crews and the same message was echoed about the support they got from citizens responding to calls when most of the lights were out, the street lights were out, uh, the courtesy uh, that our staff was given to help mitigate our calls and deal with the volume, the support from the media, getting the message out about the safety challenges in homes using candles and uh, other devices meant for outside like the uh, barbecues uh, uh, 
and uh, generators, etc. So I thank the media for their support because it was extremely helpful. I thank the civics for their cooperation. Thank you again. Good morning, everybody. Uh, lots and lots of uh, tree work ahead of us still, uh, both on private property and on the streets and in parks. So again, just be aware of your surroundings. Look up before you walk under any trees. Uh, lots of work being done right now. Crews are spending less time with hydro and more time just looking after the hazardous branches that are out there. They have worked tirelessly 24-7 alongside uh, all the other uh, emergency response uh, units that are out there. And I just want to say thank you very, very much to everybody who's been working so hard. It's been an incredible effort. It's one of the times when, although it's a very difficult time, it's a great time to be a civil servant because you're reminded of the, the public you serve and uh, how important it is to work together as a team. And that, we've seen that out in the field time and again. We see it with the public and the interaction that we've had with them. They've been very patient, very thankful, and we do show up and we really appreciate that. So just uh, the focus on the future going forward now is safety. We're trying to make trees safe as, as best we can and uh, we're doing that on the streets and in the parks. And citizens should be hiring experts to look after the trees on their own property as well. Thank you. Um, we've heard a lot about the warming centers, folks. Um, if it wasn't for Jamie Romoff, I don't think these warming centers would be happening right now. Um, she hasn't said uh, anything during these press conferences, but it, it's time to uh, say thank you, uh, Jamie. And thank you for your time. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I'm just happy to stand here this morning uh, with the news that we only had 72 people in our warming and reception centers last night. To a peak of 2,400 people served uh, Christmas dinner on Christmas Day, which was our uh, highest point of participation, and 1,000 people staying in our reception centers. I would like to thank uh, the tremendous amount of support we had from a number of community partners and agencies, starting with the Toronto District School Board, who made their schools open and available to us at a moment's notice. Uh, great service and a great partnership there. The Red Cross, uh, who have been uh, manning our reception centers, organizing them, had a tremendous amount of volunteers out working direct, directly with people that were uh, staying in our warning centers, St. John's Ambulance, uh, Toronto Public Health, and of course all the staff of the Park Forestry and Recreation Division who worked tirelessly through uh, Christmas and, and, uh, and all of the 24-hour shifts that entailed. So thank you on behalf of all of us, to all of them and certainly to the community and the people that were in our reception centers for their generosity towards each other and their ability to work together. Uh, it really worked out well. And we're, we're now hoping that we're gonna be able to wind down on this to this point. No questions? Saturday before the storm hit, we started the EOC. It was located at our John Mills Center. We lost power there. We ended up uh, going back to the present location at Metro Hall and then eventually back into the John Mills location. Uh, these are the staff that coordinate with all the agencies and uh, service providers. Uh, they work 24 7. They work under the instant man management system. And I think did a superlative job. I really want to thank all the agencies that we uh, were supported. We Operations Center, and uh, with all our colleagues and our frontline staff, we were able to do, I think, a superlative job on our coordination. So thanks. Thanks for that. We have a lot of counselors here. Um, I think uh, they've been working behind the scenes, but very few have been uh, with me day in and day out. And Denzel and Alon have been there day in and day out. I want to thank Denzel for his hard work and determination. Thanks, Denzel. Thank you. Um, I, I did want to just make a couple of comments quickly. Uh, 
I did want to briefly speak about how now we're moving from an emergency stage, we're transitioning into uh, a cleanup threat stage. There will be uh, shortly announced a, a debris management plan uh, that is going to be uh, led by solid waste management and Jim Hynum. Uh, solid waste management is going to be coordinated by, uh, they're going to coordinate with transportation services and Park Forest Police and Mitigation um, to, to begin the, uh, the cleanup. They're, they're right now focusing now on uh, health and safety of living the trees that are in danger. Um, but soon we'll, we will be going into the cleanup phase in a more substantial way. Um, and uh, that's going to take a long time. Uh, we expect it's going to take anywhere between six to eight weeks. And uh, it is it is, uh, it, it is going to be a difficult task and more patience is going to be required uh, because this is a, a project that will take us, take our staff from street to street looking at debris, having chip, chipper trucks go, on, go around every street. So um, that's going to be a, a, a very long process, and uh, there will be more to come this week about uh, detailed plans about how that is going to roll out. Any questions? With respect to the meeting in January 10th, and obviously to address the storm. <coughs> Excuse me, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I would like to also thank all the residents and businesses This is not 
all sorts of stuff like that, not in the city. It's a safe, clean city. And, and the people taught, I believe, uh, I definitely taught me um, that they can take care of themselves and help each other out and take care of the seniors and, and the disabled people and take complete strangers in. Um, that's, that's the lesson that I was taught through this whole process, to see, see how the city comes together as one. Uh, it was truly incredible to see how the staff um, comes together and wants complete strangers didn't even know each other and taking them in and, and you know I saw it with my own eyes sitting here you know sleep on our, our pot or sleep on our couch and give a warm breakfast or a warm lunch and the reception center it, it was it's so um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, so there's so many multitasks going on at, at one time um, it was truly incredible so I want to thank the, the residents of us a lesson um, on working together. But when you think about it, is there something that you would have done differently? I, I can't say. Right now, off the top of my head, we, from that Saturday at Metro Hall, um, we were on top of things as fast as humanly possible. I couldn't have said um, to Andy Byford or, or Lou or anyone behind me to, to move faster or, or to do things better. We were working as quick as we could. Don't, and don't forget the demand on us. The calls were coming in. We were having to give answers out um, to the people. You, you saw the call volume, like 138,000 people calling in one day. I know I was getting in the mayor's office 5,000 calls in one day. Our voicemails were getting filled up. As soon as we cleared them, they were right back up filled up. And this is, you know, with skeleton staff during the holidays. We were all experiencing it. I was talking to counselors consistently through the holidays. They're saying, Rob, I can't keep up with the calls and emails coming in. So. Um, I think, I think we did a fantastic job. I don't know how you define perfect, but I, I would say we're pretty close to perfect. I, I, we didn't have any fatalities. Um, that, thankfully, we haven't had any fatalities. We had a couple injuries, but this could have been a lot worse. It could have been really, really bad, and it did. And it's because of the people behind me, it's because of the people outside, the taxpayers that uh, stood up for each other and worked together in a very complex situation. I want to thank everyone again.